Now this looks like a normal RC car. But is instead completely run by a Ross. Hello everybody, this is Tiziano and today we are going to answer a frequently asked question. Can you run ROS on an Arduino board? In this video, we will learn how to connect a node running on an Arduino board to your ROS framework with very little effort. Now ROS2 is a completely different beast and we will address it on a separate video because there's no ROS serial in ROS2, but actually there is a micro ROS that is meant to run on embedded processor. Unfortunately, not on most of the Arduino boards because they're not powerful enough. But as I said, this is gonna be treated on a separate video. This video is all about connecting ROS1 and Arduino using a very simple example to work with and an example that you can expand to your own need. As usual, you can find the source code on my repository. Check out the link in the description below. And if you're just getting started in the magic world of robotics and you want to master the robot operating system, then you definitely need to check out the course Zero to ROS, a course dedicated to beginners that Chris and I just put together. You can find the link in the description below. My donkey car has been working great so far, but has two main drawbacks. The first of which is that it has no direct connection between the RC transmitter and ROS, so all the commands have to go through the command teleop twist keyboard or command teleop twist joypad, but it doesn't have the nice feeling of an RC transmitter. Secondly, the I2C servo interface. I received a lot of complaints about problems installing the package for controlling the I2C adapter. So I thought, what if I put an Arduino in between the Raspberry Pi and the servo and the receiver so I can on one side capture the receiver with the Arduino and transmit the receiver input to ROS and also get the ROS commands and convert them to PWM signal to the servos. The biggest problem is where to get started from. Well, thankfully, ROS Serial came to the rescue. ROS Serial aimed to remove all those custom code that you have to write in order to interface a microcontroller to your robotic application. They can use the topics, the services, and the login features of ROS. ROS Serial is made even more powerful when you use all the tools that have been added. And today we are going to be using the ROS Serial Arduino tool. So let's get started with the tutorial. First step, the Arduino side. We're going to install Arduino in our Linux virtual machine. First, we download the package from the Arduino website. Then we extract it. Now we browse in the Arduino folder that we just extracted from the package and we run the install. So dot slash install dot sh, hit enter. And this is our Arduino IDE. Now let's open the sketch that I've written for the Arduino IDE that I call PWM in underscore zero one. This sketch is made for testing the RC in without any ROS connection. As you can see, the sketch is very simple. I define the pins for the steering and throttle input. And then in the setup, I set the pin mode as input. And then later in the loop, I just going to read the pulse. So I'm gonna use this predefined pulse in that what it does, it captures the time between two high values so I assign that timing to the channel and then I print it. And here you can see that my radio first is off, then I turn it on and the two channels are oscillating around 1500 and then now I'm moving the steering and the throttle and you can definitely see the values are changing. So this is nice, but Arduino also have a very useful serial plotter. And there you go, you have the RC input for the steering and the throttle channel both between 1,000 and 2,000 microseconds. And then if I turn off my radio, one of those values drops to zero. So that gives me the idea that I can use this value to check whether the radio is connected or not. So I'm gonna define a PWM disconnect value of 700, so way below the expected uh, 1,000. That's for the minimum value. And then what I'm gonna say is that if any of those channel is below the minimum, the PWM disconnect value, then I consider the radio as disconnected. And I'm gonna print it. So let's try it again. As you can see that the is disconnected is zero because the radio is connected. And then if I turn it off, 
there it goes, the is disconnected flag becomes one. Now let's take a step further and we're gonna put the Arduino in between the receiver and the servos. So we're going to read the receiver output and we're gonna use that to control the servos. So as before, we're gonna read the throttle input and string input from nine and 10. And then we're going to connect the servos to the pins five and six. We define the two input channels as input. But in addition to that, we're going to use the servo library. So we're going to define the throttle and steering as two servos and we attach the output pin over here. And then the loop is pretty simple. First, we're gonna read the two channels using pulse in as before, and then we're just going to write the values in microseconds to the two servos. And of course, if the radio is disconnected, we're going to use the PWM out disconnect value. So let's give it a try. Before we jump into coding, let's have a look at the architecture of the final project. We can start from the serial Arduino. This is the node running in our Arduino using the raw serial. This node will read the RC input from the receiver and will publish the corresponding PWM in microsecond to the topics RC steering and RC throttle. Those two will go to an Arduino proxy node running in Ubuntu that we will develop in my virtual machine, but it will also run on the Raspberry Pi later. This node will subscribe to those topics and will convert it to command val, something that our DKLLC, our donkey car node, knows already how to handle. We will modify the donkey car node in order to publish to the servo steering and servo throttle topics and then the serial Arduino node will subscribe to the servo steering and servo throttle topics and will convert those information to PWM to control the actual servos. So let's get started. And now we're going to move to the ROS serial. We're going to follow the instruction on the ROS wiki page about ROS serial. So the first thing we're going to do is installing the ROS serial package with sudo apt-get install ROS kinetic ROS serial Arduino and the ROS Kinetic ROS Serial. Next, we have to install the ROS lib in the Arduino environment so we can find the examples in the Arduino IDE. So we browse into the Arduino libraries, we open a terminal and we just type ROS run, ROS Serial, Arduino, and then make libraries.py. At this point, just open your Arduino IDE and browse in the examples and you should find the ROS lib installed. And there we find an example for controlling a servo. So we're gonna use this as a starting point of our project. So even if you are not familiar with ROS in C++, just bear with me because the syntax is very simple. So on the top side, we include the ROS library and the standard message uin16 type message. And then we define this object an H that's a node handle of the ROS library. Here we have this servo CB that's the callback function that as you can see receives a message of type standard message uin16 and that writes this value directly into the servo. And then the rest of the code is extremely simple. Here we define a subscriber of type standard message uin16 and the callback function is servo CB. Then in the setup, we initialize the node we initialize the subscriber, we attach the servo, we call the spin ones from the node handle, and that is really it. So let's give it a try. Now I have connected the Arduino to my local virtual machine, not to the Raspberry Pi. And this is because it's much easier to develop on my virtual machine. And then I'm gonna move all the code developed on the Raspberry Pi later. So in my terminal, first I'm gonna start the raw score. And then here I'm gonna run the ROS serial client. So ROS run, ROS serial, and then I hit tab, and I can see that I have the option of running ROS serial Arduino, ROS serial messages, ROS serial client, and the ROS serial Python. I'm going to select the ROS serial Python, and then serial node. And then I have to specify the port, in my case is dev, TTY USB 0 and the speed is 57600. And as you can see, the raw serial Python node is running. So this is the only thing that you have to remember. You have to run a raw serial Python interface in order to connect raw serial with your ROS. And then here I can type ROS topic list. And there it is. I have the topic servo 
that is requested by the subscriber servo in my Arduino example. So now let's try to publish an angle. So let's publish, I don't know, 180. So ROS topic, pub, then on the on the topic servo, and the message is gonna be the UN16. So let me double tab, and there is gonna build the message for me. So the data is going to be 180. Go. There you go. So let's stop it. And let's now command zero. That should be all the way on the other side. There it goes. And then let's command 90. That's the mid angle in between zero and 180. That's it. So this works. Now we need a node that converts the ROS topic coming from the Arduino into command bell. So something that our donkey car already knows how to process. So we're gonna create this RC Arduino proxy node and this subscribes to the RC throttle and RC steering and then it publishes a command bell. So here we have the two callbacks for updating the throttle and updating the steering. And as you can see, we are using this function PWM to a dimensional that we define right here, where we convert the incoming PWM from PWM minimum and PWM maximum, that are usually a thousand to two thousand, into an dimensional value between negative one and one. So update throttle updates the ROS twist message linear X component, while the update steering callback updates the angular Z. And then in the run, we just have a while ROSPI is shut down. Here we check whether the RC is connected. And if it is, then we publish the ROS twist message that has been built in the two callbacks. Now we're going to have a look at the changes to the low level control in order to be compatible with the new interface. So we start off by modifying our class servo convert. This servo convert class is initialized with a center value of 1500 and a range of 1000. That's because the PWM is centered at 1500 microseconds and then has a range of 1000 microseconds from 1000 to 2000 microseconds. And then you remember that there is this get value out that scales the input value into an output value for our servo. In our case, it will scale from negative one to one into a range that goes from a thousand to two thousand. And then we have the class DK low level control. In this class, we have a dictionary of actuators, throttle and steering of type servo convert. And then we create those two publishers to servo throttle and servo steering that will publish a message of type UN16 that will be the position of the servo in microsecond. And then we have a subscriber that subscribes to the command bell topic and will call these set actuators from command bell callback function. The callback function passes linear X and angular Z and scales them into a thousand to 2000 microsecond using the get value out function. And then in send servo message, we publish the PWM value to the two servo throttle and servo steering in microsecond. Lastly, we have the run function that keeps the node spinning. And in case the connection is lost, all the actuators are set to idle. That in our case means set all to zero or the servo to 1500. And now we put everything together. If everything runs as it's supposed to be, then it will feel like as it was a normal RC car, but instead, it isn't. Everything runs through ROS. So here in my terminal, I SSH into my Raspberry Pi on the donkey car. And as usual, you just SSH Ubuntu at ubiquityrobot.local and the password, the default password, if you follow the initial example, is just Ubuntu. So I opened those three terminals. All three of them are in the Raspberry Pi. So first thing, I'm going to run the ROS serial proxy. So I'm going to type ROS run, ROS serial Python, and then the node is serial node. Then it's going to listen to the port DevTTY USB 0, and the baud rate is 57600. There you go. As you can see, the ROS serial node has started and is already receiving this RC throttle and RC steering. In this window instead, I'm going to run the Arduino proxy node. So ROS run, the package that is donkey car, and the file that is RC Arduino to twist. There you go. Finally, I'm going to run the donkey car low level control node that we just modified. So ROS run donkey car low level control. 
Everything is ready and running. Okay, so now we are ready for the first test. Let's go. Right. Left. Awesome. Forward. Backward. Everything looks ready for the first test outdoor. Go! So now that you know how to expand your ROS projects with Arduino, what is it the first project that you're going to use it for? Write it down in the description below. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you next time. And to all my students, I'll see you in class.